Hi everybody, it's Doreen and welcome back to the first tutorial for 2015. And what will we be making? Well, what do I always make? We're going to be making a card. And this is the first birthday card. Well, actually it's not the first birthday card because I did do a couple of cards while I was on my little break, but I didn't record how I made the cards. So this is actually the first card that we're going to be doing together. And it's going to be a birthday card and it is what is called an easel card. So what does our card look like for today? This is the card that we will be making and as I said it is an easel card so it sits up like this. And I'm just going to turn it up so you can see that. So, come on and join me, and I'm going to show you how I made this card. Okay, everybody, so we're going to go ahead and bring up our supplies so we can get started. So, as I said, this is a Lori Whitlock file for the ESO portion, and I will put a link to the website where you can go ahead and download this file to your silhouette and the other part of the card is what is the paper piecing and I'm gonna say that I didn't particularly care for this file putting it together but I'll show you what I mean once we get started here so here are my pieces for my um, easel portion and as you can see you have your score here, so you're just going to fold that back, and then you're going to go ahead and score this down. So I'm going to go ahead and take my bone folder and just go run across here so we can make sure we've got that scored very nicely. And then I'll run across here and make sure this portion right here is scored very nicely. So we'll just put this aside for right now because we're going to work on the top piece to our easel portion. So. I've gone ahead and cut it out, and you'll see you have two pieces here. And I've also gone ahead and inked my edges. And this time I'm using the Antique Linen by Tim Holtz. And my cardstock is just some of this card, textured cardstock that I got the abundance of that I'm going to be using for quite a while. And this piece here, um, I'm not sure where I got this. This was a scrap piece left over from previous cards so I don't remember the name or where I got it so now what you want to do is kind of line up your scallop so there's a little trick to this and it kind of looks like this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the ATG gun and get some tape along here and I'm going to try to go across from scallop to scallop so that I do get some tape on my edges as well for when we tape this piece down. I'm just wondering if I got something under there. I won't lay flat there. So we'll get some on this edge here. And it may overflow and I'll just go ahead and kind of take care of that once we get it laid down. So, as I said, you can see I've got some pieces of tape showing on the other side, and we'll just fold those over and get those out the way. So now, let's once again line this up, and make sure that I've kind of got my scallops lined up the way I want them. And then I'm just going to go ahead and press down. So now the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take and put our front portion to the easel cart because the way your cart works is we'll take our inside piece here which is your other scallop piece for the inside and that gets laid down there and as you can see the file does cut a little hole if you don't want that hole and you just want to get rid of it you can do that in your silhouette software or if you're not going to use a brad 
and you're going to use a button or whatever you want to use for your stoppage piece, that's kind of where you lay it so that your card sits up to the easel portion and your stoppage would be right where that little hole is right there. So I think before we add this, I'm going to go ahead and put on my top layer piece that I want or my happy birthday piece. So now as I said, I did cut this file. I believe it's from the cutting it's not the cutting cafe it's the hold on let me get the name it is called SVG cutting files now it's not confused with SVG cuts it's called SVG cutting files com and I will put the link down below in the description bar so that you can go to the website so now I was not happy with the way this cutting file was set up. I didn't like the fact with the paper piecing that once your letters cut out or this piece cuts out you have your letters that are left over that look like this and I'm just not going to put them all up but they, they look like this and what I had to do was take the space or the piece that was inside here and then tape that or glue that down into here so it could really look like you were spelling out happy birthday and these were some very very tiny 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 pieces that I had to do this so I just want to warn you if you want to make this card and you want to use this file this is what you'll have to do I suppose you could probably do some releasing the compound path in your silhouette software but I didn't think about that at the time so I didn't do that but if I were to do this card again which I typically don't make the same card more than once I would probably do that so that is going to sit right here but we're gonna go ahead and finish putting on the rest of our layers so I went ahead and took the next layers and I did use my Darice folder it's called the wood grain just to give it a little dimension for right here and we're just gonna put this on using the HEG gun because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop up the little coffee cup guy and have that sitting popped up so I think I've got enough tape on there no, I don't like the things to fall off, so I really use a lot of tape. And then sometimes when I want to take things off, I've put so much tape on there, I have a difficult time getting the tape off. So now we've got that on. So basically, I started putting this together already, so you didn't have to watch me glue in those little tiny pieces. And I also put it together the little coffee cup or styrofoam cup guy. And this is basically filed, it's called the Nerdy Guy or something to that effect. So he's going to sit kind of like that. So what I'm going to do with him is I am going to pop him up. You know how I like to have dimension with my cards. Oops, his little glasses came off, so let's put those back on. I just use my... Um, Siron sticker maker to put the glasses on. I guess I didn't put them on there. Tight enough or pressed down hard enough. So there we go. So now let's take this dimension off here. And we probably probably should put this on here first so that we can get the tape on the back and our little guy won't be in the way so I'm gonna put our tape on here as well and then we can add our coffee cup and I like the card it is a little um, or the cut file it is a cute it's just wasn't that easy 
putting it together with these small tiny pieces. And I kind of came up with this design because my husband loves coffee. Yeah, let's straighten it out a little bit more. I'm going kind of crooked there. And bear with me. Kind of, you don't know I like to measure anything, so I'm kind of trying to get this even. So. There we go. We have it there, and then we can add our little guy. And I'm kind of going to angle him just a little bit. Like so. So there is our top part of our easel card. So now, let's go ahead and put this onto the easel. So what you want to do is, you don't want any tape on the bottom half of this. You only want it on the top half. So what I typically do is I get my tape on here and line, that way I can line up my scallops or line my card up. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my tape gun and get my tape going all the way across. And if you want, you can go ahead and put tape on this side too. That's up to you. I typically don't because the ATG gun really, really sticks very well. So you want to line up your scallops as best you can. And then you're just going to press it together. So it sits like so. So now the last thing you're going to do is you're going to just take your inside piece and place this down. And if you are going to add a brad, you need to add your brad first, then go ahead and tape this down. And it just sits right here, and then you'll have your brad, and that stops your card when you want to have it sitting up. And then when you put it in your envelope, you just face it down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish adding some embellishments and then I'll come back with the finished card and my envelope. Okay everybody, so I'm back with the finished card. So what I went ahead and did is I didn't add too much on the front of the card because as you know, as I said, this is for my husband so I couldn't add any bling on this card. So I just went ahead and added uh, some candies. At least that's what they're called. And they look like this. And I apologize for that glare. I just added a couple of those on the front here. So now for the inside, I went ahead and stamped out a little sentiment right here. And then I added my little um, button brad. And then I also went ahead and stamped out the words love you. And then I took my peachy keen stamps and stamped out some little smiley faces down here along the scallops. And then, so it sits like so. And then for the envelope, I went ahead and did a pre-made envelope. And I took the letters that were left over from cutting out the happy and the birthday. And I just added those to my envelope. Now, I made this envelope using the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board, which looks like this. And I cut out a 5.5 by 5.5 inch envelope because I couldn't get this to fit in the regular standard size envelope. So, what you'll do if you're using the We Are Memory Keeper board, you'll use the 5.5 by 5.5. You'll cut your paper. 9 by 9, and your first score mark will be at 4 and a half inches. And this paper is from a paper pack by My Mind's Eye, and it's called Antique Dots Collection. So that's it, everybody. This is our first card tutorial for 2015. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.